Hi folks, Dave, the Honest Audiophile. This is the Fosse Audio DS1, and these are my Honest Audiophile impressions. I want to thank Fosse Audio for providing the DS1 for review. To greatly appreciate it, Fosse Audio, you rock. All right, so the Fosse Audio DS1, this will set you back $80 from your bank account. It is a USB-C DAC amp dongle, and it uses the ES Sabre ES9038Q2M DAC chip. It will do bit rates up to 32768 and DSV512. Has a frequency response range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Output power is 120 milliwatts single ended and 220 milliwatts balanced. Comes in this black box, nothing too special here. Just a spot for your dongle and some accessories. The accessories that you get, you get paperwork. All sorts of paperwork. And then you also get a USB to USB-C adapter, a USB-C to USB-C cable that's really short. And then you get the dongle itself. Now the DS1 is made of metal, weighs about 40 grams. It is a chunk and it is rather heavy. The DS1 has this carbon fiber type of back on it, which adds a little bit of grippiness. So when it's sitting on a desk, it won't move around. But this is a heavy, heavy dongle. And uh, on the front, you have 4.4 output and 3.5 output. And then on one side, you have your volume up and volume down buttons. And then Right here, really hard to see on camera, there's a little LED light. And that'll tell you the different bit rates and file types that you're listening to. You will definitely notice the DS1 in your pocket. It is heavy. It will pull things down uh, if you have it dangling. It is heavy, but once it's on a device, it's not moving anywhere. It's gonna, It's going to hold its own, so to speak, on the desk. It's not going to move. It's about the size of my thumb. All right, so the DS1. You know, you just plug in your little USB-C cable and you plug that into your source, whether it be a phone, laptop, uh, PC, DAP, whatever you're using it with. The DS1. It was able to power pretty much anything I threw at it IEM wise. When it came to over ear headphones, not so much. Some of the easier to drive over ear headphones, it would um, get the volume and it was listenable. But if I tried using it with planar IEMs or anything 150 ohms or higher, it really didn't. Uh, do very well it would give them the volume but you could definitely tell it was kind of lacking so um, IEM wise this thing is where you want to use it the IEMs that I used varied from anything from super easy to use to hard to drive planars the planars pretty much had to be used on the 4.4 balanced output Single-ended was able to drive anything. Output impedance is very low, and I had no issues with hissing or popping or anything of the sort. So uh, this is a very clean uh, dongle. How does it sound? So the Fosse Audio DS1 bass is very fun and engaging, has a natural warm tint to it. And it has a, a, a good amount of details and resolution with nice tone and timbre. You're going to get some rumble and grumble in the sub bass. Not a whole lot, but there's some there. And then the mid bass is going to be the focus. And then the upper bass has just a little bit of warmth that's going to bleed into the lower mids. Just a little bit to add a little bit of body and a little bit of note weight. Overall, the bass is very engaging. There's nice impact. There's nice slam, nice punch, especially in the mid bass. And there's good texture. And it's just a, a very clean and clear 
uh, base with a, a power and control and and i really enjoy the base of the ds1 and i found it to be very engaging and keeps the toes tapping and the air drummers going so i liked the base um of the fossey audio ds1 and then the tonality of it is very accurate and true and i found that instruments and vocalists and anything that resided in those areas of the bass were very pleasurable and easy to differentiate and determine what they were the mids of the ds1 have the same tendency where it's just a lot of uh note weight and a, a lot of, of good body to it and there's a nice naturalism with some warmth to it it's very enjoyable and very pleasing and there's a nice engagement and and a a, a pleasurable listen when it comes to the mids tonality is very good it has nice tone and timbre instruments and vocals sounded very accurate and true and then details and resolution were also very good. And I just found that the, the mids took what, what we hear the most, which are the mids, and kind of put a spotlight on them without being the highlight. So they just kind of enhanced them and, and kind of brought them to light without taking over the entire um, presentation. It just kind of made you make notice of them without being like force fed and then the treble the treble extends nicely it is slightly soft and rolled off up top it does kind of miss just a little bit of sizzle a little bit of a bite and edginess and crispiness up top but for the most part there's just enough there to keep things engaging and just like the bass and the mids the tonality and the timbre is very good and detail retrieval and resolution is nice, but it is a little bit more on the laid back, somewhat soft rolled off side, so it's not a fatiguing type of sound signature. Sound stage. So the stage of the DS1 is actually rather small. Unfortunately, the DS1 doesn't have a very expansive sound stage and at times can sound very intimate and everything kind of sounds safe and close to the chest. It doesn't really expand out. There's tracks at times that you know are supposed to sound grandeur and very open sounding. And the DS1 just doesn't really project that. It just kind of keeps it very close and very near. And it, it doesn't really open up and kind of give you that wow factor moment. It is a very safe and close sound stage, almost borderline intimate and at times can sound a little bit cramped. It does have good depth and it does do well with layering and it sounds balanced and cohesive, but at the same time, it just kind of sounds too small. And on some tracks that are a little busy and a very uh, en uh, energized <laughs> would be a word, it can sound a little bit confused. And I do wish that it was a little bit more open and a little bit more spacious sounding. That It, it kind of takes that safe approach and keeps things close to the vest. And that can hamper it just a little bit with its staging. Imaging is good. Things track across the stage and you can place things very well. And as I said, it has good depth and layering. And you can tell if things are in front or behind and if things are moving around. It just doesn't really go real far. Uh, images that kind of trail out and fall off kind of seem to disappear quickly and things that are coming in from far distance kind of just appear. They don't really kind of come in quietly or loudly. They just kind of all of a sudden appear. Tone and timbre is good. It does have this naturalism about it and I find that instruments and vocalists sound very accurate and true. I had no problems whatsoever deciphering what instrument it was where it was in the track and being able to follow it around detail retrieval and resolution is good for the price point and i found that i wasn't lacking any images uh, or any details and it was resolving it very well so the ds1 i like it, it does something a little bit different how does it compare to a couple other dongles in this price point 
So you have the Hibby FC3. Now the Hibby FC3 is only single-ended. It does have a little bit less power than the DS1, but it still powers all IEMs other than those hard to drive pesky planars. Uh, the F FC3 does have a more neutral analytical sound signature and at times can sound a little bit colder than the DS1. It's not as warm and as keen and engaging as the DS1 will sound, but the FC3 is better detailed and better resolving. Also does better with a more accurate stage and does better with imaging depth and layering and then you have the tantrum space now the tantrum space has very similar power especially on balanced output and the tantrum space has a little bit better of a sound stage it's a little bit more grandeur and it has a little bit better depth and a little bit more space imaging is very similar in its placement and also in its tracking capabilities the space has a little bit more of a neutral lean. It's not quite as thick. doesn't have as much note weight and body as the DS1. And the tantrum space will sound a little bit thinner. Overall, the Fosse Audio DS1, I enjoy it quite a bit. And I think it does something a little different, giving you that closer, more intimate sound signature and having that good depth and layering and that more natural and accurate tone and timbre. So if you're you're looking for something a little bit on the more warm side with good details, good resolution, and a more intimate, cozy, comfy type of sound, the Fosse Audio DS1 may be the dongle for you. It's been Dave, the Honest Audiophile. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Speaking of the next video, somewhere on screen, subscription links, notification bells. If you haven't already, please check those off. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when the next video is uploaded. And don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video if you enjoyed or didn't enjoy this video. And also, if you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out the links down below. There's ways that you can support it through one-time gifts with PayPal and uh, Venmo or through monthly subscriptions with Patreon and YouTube memberships. Speaking of, I want to thank my supporters through Patreon and YouTube memberships. Thank you very much for all that you give to the channel. It's much appreciated. If you're interested, please check out the links. There's all kinds of benefits that you can get, like access to my private Discord server and all kinds of other things. So check out those links if you're interested in supporting the channel. Also, don't forget to check out all the links. There's all kinds of other information on there regarding how you contact channel, follow channel, support channel, all that kind of stuff along with gear recommendations and music recommendations and gear rankings and all kinds of stuff. So check out the links down below. And lastly, don't forget to enjoy the music and that honesty is the best policy.